Okay, thank you. Uh, so great to be here uh, today at Santa Fe Navy Week and to talk about uh, a topic that's very important to all of us in uniform, which is how the Department of Defense uh, manages and supports and does business with small business. Uh, I'm gonna give you my two cents as a flag officer in the United States Navy. Uh, it couldn't be a time in our nation's history, in the global history, where American ingenuity, uh, research and development, the talent of entrepreneurs, and that spirit that, is, that has really made us the society that we are, that we don't leverage that uh, to increase the readiness, both warfighting, uh, computer systems, personnel, uh, readiness across the board. So uh, I couldn't be more happy to be here to see the conversation, and I'm turning it over to Mr. Smith uh, to take the details. And again, thank you so much for spending some time with us today to talk about this topic. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, folks. My name is Jimmy Smith, and I'm the Small Business Director for the Office of uh, Small Business Programs for the Department of the Navy. And we're going to give you a brief today about being procurement ready to do business with the Navy and the, and the uh, Marine Corps. Uh, Ms. Destin, let's go ahead and uh, get started on slides. Outstanding. And I can't tell you how happy I am to be here with the Santa Fe Navy Week. This is an awesome opportunity and our ability to reach folks via webinars nowadays has been such a great asset to, to me having to not travel so much like I used to. I can imagine uh, thinking back to before COVID, I was probably on the road 60, 65 percent of the time traveling all around the country to spread the word about the Navy's open for business and we're looking for opportunities for small businesses to partner with us. So uh, let's go to the, to the next slide. We'll get started right away. All right, this is the agenda that we'll step through. And from the, okay, you can go ahead to slide two. Um, from a strategic alignment standpoint, everything we do in the Department of Defense needs to align perfectly with the National Defense Strategy. And the small business uh, world that I work in is no different. And we're operating in accordance with the Department of the Navy's operations plan, which flows straight from the National Defense Strategy. And I would encourage our industry partners and folks that want to do business with us, please read the National Defense Strategy. There's an unclassified version that's available, and there's also a, a classified version that's available. And if you have the security clearance for that, please read those documents and understand exactly where the Department of Defense is going with defense of this nation and the capability we need to give the warfighters and those that are supporting the warfighters. Uh, my small business strategic plan falls in three focus areas, people, capability, and processes, and we'll get into a little bit of that here right away. Uh, next slide, man. Okay, so as you can see, within the Department of Defense's national defense strategy, there are three lines of effort. Increase lethality and readiness, strengthen alliances, and reform uh, the department through performance and affordability. The small business plan goes right after major defense acquisition programs to make sure that they're doing the right things when it comes to partnering with small businesses. Delivering capability that the warfighter needs, as I mentioned, and supporting those that support the warfighter. We have alignment up and down the food chain with the things that we do, and we also want to make small businesses aware in order to do business with the Department of Defense, there are some, some barriers that uh, small businesses may run into like CMMC and category management. And those things I'll explain to you a little bit later, but you need to have your cyber hygiene in a position to do business with us. That's what CMMC is all about. And there's a requirement coming down that will increase industry involvement in the cyber arena to make sure that the secrets and the things that we hold tried and true to keeping our nation safe don't end up in the hands of those adversaries that, uh, that we face. Next slide. So in 2020, the National Defense Industrial Association conducted a study and they basically found four areas where we need industry help and support innovation, production input, supply chain, and political and regulatory conditions. Those four areas are where 
um, that report primarily focused as blind spots that we have and we're closing those opportunities down and making sure that we have qualified people and opportunities working in those areas. And I'll get into a little bit more of that as we get through. But as you can see, <clears throat> uh, the defense industrial base was basically given a grade of a C. And C will not win the wars and battles that we need to be into. So we need industry to be there to support the readiness and warfighting capability that we offer our warfighters. Next slide. Uh, next up on the agenda, we'll talk about an overview of the Small Business Office. Yep. So back in 1951 was when the Navy actually began its journey down the small business track. Uh, Sarkis Tadakin is actually the driver of that uh, big rig, or what was called a big rig back in the day. Um, and he actually drove that truck primarily through continental United States, spreading the word about the Navy's looking for small businesses to do business with and he showcased in that trailer things that the Navy needs and spurred up a great deal of interest. And, you know, he just recently passed away earlier this year after a, a large, uh, I think it was 70 some odd years of service that he provided to the defense of this nation. And, and right up to the very end, he worked hard at making sure that small businesses have an opportunity to do business. So, in keeping with the goals and expectations that he levied upon the Navy, we're holding tried and true to foster what he started. And we don't see a reason to discontinue that service. Next slide. So as I mentioned earlier, the small business uh, overview, I've got my vision, mission statement and strategy there on the left-hand slide of the chart. But we are perfectly aligned to make sure that we're offering the opportunities, we're training people to execute that work and we're making sure that we give work and opportunities to those that are gonna serve as well. Uh, there are no free handouts. When you do business with the Department of Defense, we absolutely need you to deliver. This isn't a, we have set aside, we have many opportunities where you can do business with us, but those aren't free walks in the park, folks. I can tell you that right off the bat. So if you're seeking those kind of opportunities to just you know get away with, making a little cash here on the side and not deliver, you're dealing with the wrong, wrong opportunity. So we're serious. Uh, from a civilian side and military side, we need you to give people the capability that we require. And to do business with us is strictly in that vein. Provide capability, provide those resources uh, or, or processes that we need in order to facilitate that work. Okay, next slide. So let me quickly walk through the major 10 buying commands that make up the Department of the Navy. And when I say Department of the Navy, I mean Navy and Marine Corps. So if you wanna do business with us, one of these 10 or all of these 10 are there to do business with you. These are the folks that have the money. These are the folks that have the contracts. So first up, Marine Corps Installations and Logistics Command. Uh, they're headquartered right here in Washington, DC and they provide the major ground equipment that the Marines need in order to go off and fortify those opportunities or build roads or build bridges in order for them to complete their mission. So the facilitation of installations and logistics. Next on the list, Marine Corps Systems Command. Everything that the Marine need, that warfighter, those boots on the ground needs by way of boots, uniforms, weapons, vehicles, everything that that warfighter needs come out of, comes out of the Marine Corps Systems Command and they're headquartered in Quantico, Virginia. Next on the list, Navy Facilities Engineering Command. These are the folks who build the buildings, uh, maintain the bases, uh, the, everything we need from a taking care of personnel on base or off base in some situations. Uh, the grounds keepers at the various bases. Uh, those efforts are, are facilitated out of the Naval Facilities Engineering Command. Again, here in Washington, DC. Strategic Systems Command, if you're into the high-end technological uh, opportunities and, and places where you wanna go to work, this may be the opportunity for you, but this organization is responsible for the Trident Missile Program, nuclear missile, uh, nuclear weapon housed on board submarines and therefore uh, defense of this nation in, in, in that regard. Uh, great organization. I've worked for them for three years of my career 
and it's really the high end threat, the really the great opportunity to go off and push the edge of the envelope with technology. Next on the list is the Naval Supply Systems Command. These are the folks who provide the, basically the consumables, the paints, the adhesives, the spare parts, those things that we need in order to maintain and sustain the fleet, uh, especially when we do maintenance and overhaul periods. This is the organization we go to to buy those things in order to keep our Navy running. Next slide. Next on the list is Military Sealift Command. We actually have a fleet outside of the warfighting fleet that supports the Navy. These are basically chartered large ship type vessels that are there with cargo to replenish underway missions for our at sea assets. So if you need weapons, if you need food, if you need your trash taken away, these are the platforms that pull up alongside our ships operating at sea and provide that transfer in uh, their headquarters down in Norfolk, Virginia. Uh, vertical reps, uh, vert reps as they're called, we actually have helicopters that we employ to pick up those goods, transfer them from one deck over to the other deck in some cases. In other cases, we ferry them back and forth with, uh, with ships. So great organization there, headquartered down in Norfolk, Virginia. Next on the list, the uh, Naval Air Systems Command. Everything that flies in the Navy, be it a drone, be it a fixed wing aircraft, rotary aircraft, is housed out of the Naval Air Systems Command and they're there to en engineer those capabilities across the Navy and Marine Corps. Uh, they're headquartered in Patuxent uh, River, Maryland. Next on the list is NAV War, uh, the Information Warfare Systems Command. So all of your IT, all of your communications, those things to allow for interoperability of our platforms are done out of the NAV War Command. Headquartered, San Diego, California. Next on the list is the Office of Naval Research. As the title might imply, they're all about research and pushing the next Navy and the next Navy after that from a capability standpoint. Working on the science, the technology, doing discovery and invention for those things that we have yet to realize today. They're not the engineers who are going to integrate capability onto a platform. That's what these other systems commands do. But they stay in front maybe 10, 15 years out into the future is where they're looking over the horizon and working on capability for that time frame to be realized uh, when we need it. And last but not least is the Naval Sea Systems Command. We are all about ships, submarines, aircraft carriers. That organization takes care of the life cycle support of those vessels. Everything from design, construction, maintenance, uh, ultimate disposal, that organization is responsible for maintaining those platforms. So again, if you wanna do business with us, you have to get to know us. These are the major 10 buying commands that make up the Navy. These are the folks who have the money and the opportunity to do business with you. Next slide. All right, be in procurement ready. Next slide. We've got to get you ready to do business with us. So in order for you to do that homework, we're going to make this very easy, very transparent for you to do business with us. We highly encourage you to visit each and every one of those major buying commands websites. They've got social media pages. And, and as a resource to you, you can visit my website and explore doing business with the Department of the Navy on that website. And the resources that are there and available to you are absolutely free of charge. Highly encourage you to investigate these opportunities. Along the lines of transparency, the long range acquisition forecast, every single major buying command has put on writing in an Excel spreadsheet for their various commands. Here are the solicitations that we plan on releasing and mostly we move out to a five year or six year kind of time horizon. So anything we're gonna do between now and five to maybe six years in the future, we're gonna show you here's when we plan to put this solicitation out on the street. So you can start using your time wisely, figure out which industry partners you may wanna partner with, look for those solicitations that are right for your organization to go after and see right up front, what are we doing and what are we planning? Now the long range acquisition forecast isn't a perfect document. 
things change over time, requirements may move left, funding may move right, and you have to be aware that that's not locked in stone. This is a real-time document of opportunities that we're uh, exhibiting across the Navy and Marine Corps. And when we first put the long-range acquisition forecast up on the website, it literally had 89 Excel spreadsheet pages of contract solicitations. 89 pages of thin line Excel spreadsheet solicitations that we plan to award across the Navy and Marine Corps over a time horizon, like I mentioned, five to six years out into the future. So use that information to plan accordingly. Uh, last on this list that I'll talk about here is as you're doing today, participate in the outreach events, the industry days, um, the request for sources sought. When we put information out by way of contracts to check the interest on whether an industry partner can actually do the work that we're offering, you have to respond to those solicitations, especially if you're a small business and you know you can do the work because that shapes our market research and how we may set aside work for small businesses in order to do that work. But if you don't respond, we may offer that work up to a larger industry partner to go off and do that work and then you probably are locked out of that opportunity. So don't miss the opportunity to do business with us. We're providing complete transparency into the things we need and we want you there to support the actions that we're calling for. Next slide. So again, know how to do business with us. The federal contracting opportunities, if you want to do business with the federal government, beta.sam.gov is that website. You need to be registered. You need to follow the 10 steps to getting your company approved to do business with the federal government. This is not just the Navy. This is the entire federal government. Uh, the NECO site, if you're interested in doing business with us from a procurement standpoint of maybe uh, procurements that are $25,000 and less, those kind of opportunities are there on that site. And there are some that are above the $25,000 threshold, but that's another great opportunity to see what the Navy needs from a small purchase standpoint. And then FPDS, please visit these sites, navigate them, understand how to do business with the government, and, and you can be successful. Next slide. So the Small Business Administration, we're partnered very closely with the Small Business Administration and they provide a wealth of opportunity for small businesses. Free counseling that's mentioned on the slide here, guaranteed small business loans, disaster relief, federal contracting. Through the 8-8 program, the Small Business Administration administers those contracts. So again, another resource within the government that's available for you in order to do business with us. And we're paid to provide you the assistance that you require. Next slide. All right, PTAX. These are my favorite people in the entire world. And we've highlighted some folks here within the Santa Fe community area. These are your, the local procurement technical assistant folks that are all across the country and they're there to provide local support local assistance to small businesses who want to do business with the Department of Defense and, and their people that you need to know by name. When they host events like today, we're called, we're called in because they called us to come do business in this local geographic area. And they're a wealth of, of knowledge and uh, influence over how you can do business with us. If you know, want to know which door to knock on, Start with your PTAX, and then your PTAX can reach out to other government officials for you to do business with. I can't applaud the work that they do enough, but these folks are invaluable, and I think there's over 300 of them all across the country. But they're there to provide local assistance to industry partners. And as you can see on the slide, you have some folks right there at the Santa Fe Community College and a uh, higher education center. Uh, in Santa Fe. So for those that are local to that area or anywhere across the country, get a hold of your PTAX, the website's there on the slide, but great, great resource. It is absolutely free to you. Next slide, please. Again, Sam, this is another opportunity of where you can register for how you do business with the government. So we got the website here 
and it basically gives you a step-by-step process in order to get yourself ready to be procurement ready for doing business with the government. Now, I will tell you, some of these systems and the way that you have to operate inside of them, you need to be very, very complete. If you don't fill out this information properly, the system punishes you. It won't let you do business with us if you don't accurately go about getting yourself ready to do business with us. So please, and if you need help along the way, reach out local PTACs, you can reach out to my office, or even Army, Air Force, we're all in the same vein together, and every single agency across the federal government has small business professionals like myself that are there to help assist you. So don't feel like you're on an island all alone trying to navigate these waters. If you need help, please reach out. I can't, can't stress that enough. Next slide. Okay, small uh, regional performance and spend. Okay, let's go to it. All right, so in the local, since we're doing Fleet Week here in uh, Santa Fe, let's talk what we're doing in the local area. And this is within 100 miles of Santa Fe is what we accounted for. We've had $31.74 million of, of prime contract awards in this area. Now of that, $31.54 million has gone to small businesses in that local area. So small businesses are really making out in the local Santa Fe area as far as doing business with us. So again, yeah, it looks like you're already seasoned on the opportunity. I encourage you to do more, please. And, and as I said there, the small business percentage, 99.35, you're doing very well from small businesses getting prime contracts from the government in this regard. We actually don't get any credit when you serve as a small business sub to a larger industry partner. That's not what we're interested in. We're interested in small businesses serving as primes. Okay, can't stress this enough, and the money speaks for itself. Next slide. Hey, Mr. Smith, it's the Admiral. I see there's a couple of questions. Are you going to save those till the end, or you want to address them as you roll through? On this? Uh, I'm I'm willing to pause here because there's a there's a bunch of slides that we can go through, but I'm willing to take questions at any moment, sir. Fire away, whoever's well, mine. It, it, it's I'll kick it over to Destiny if you want to pull up your Q and A piece. There's been a couple of good ones, but okay. I let Destiny manage that. Okay, our first question is asking if there are any solicitations on the NECO, N-E-C-O site that do not make it to Beta SAM. Uh, yes, absolutely. There's a threshold required for Beta SAM. Beta SAM is $25,000 or higher. NECO actually goes down to much lower levels, down to like the $15,000 range. So if you want to work on the small end of the spectrum when it comes to dollars, you definitely want to do NECO because there is a threshold of reporting for uh, beta.sam.gov. Great question, though. Thank you. Our next question is, are all federal government contract opportunities greater than 25,000 listed on sam.gov? Or are there more opportunities that are not publicly listed? If so, do you have any idea uh, I'm sorry, any advice on how small businesses can learn about those opportunities? Well, that's the major source that the entire federal government uses, and that's a, that's a standard for everyone. If you're a Department of Commerce, NASA, FBI, you name it, you put those solicitations out there in that public domain for consideration by industry partners. That's where we all go, and it's, it's pretty standard across the board. The only thing that's different when it comes to NECO is that we will drop below the threshold to still provide transparency, transparency even at a lower dollar amount level so that you know those solicitations. Uh, the one thing that you won't see on the unclassified side is classified information in those classified contracts. You will not see those in the public domain, and those are done separately through the organizations that are, are working in that arena. But if it's publicly available work, that's the one-stop shopping where you can find it all. The thing that I would encourage you to do when you're working with the Navy and the other services are coming along to get their, their areas into the same regard, our long-range acquisition forecast will tell you stories well in advance of what we will put out on beta.sam.gov. So 
that's I think I've covered that topic pretty well there. Probably beat it up a little bit. <laughs> Okay, did you want to, con there were a few others, but some of them may be touched upon later in the presentation. I don't know if you want to continue. Or yeah, Mr. Smith, let's, let's knock out a couple more slides, and then I see some folks are realizing the Q&A is pretty good. So why don't you push for a little bit longer, and then we'll let those build, and All right. White will roll back in. Shall be done. So as you can see from this slide, we've sort of gone into the data analytics mode, and we're breaking down what are the top NICS codes that are earning money in the Santa Fe area regarding the doing work for the Department of the Navy. So as you can see here, other computer related services, 16, over 16 million in that regard is spending that money. But these are areas where we're doing business. We're not saying these are the only areas where you can do business, but we, we're letting you know that we know exactly where we're spending our money and then those opportunities and the work description that they're working in. So I think we have a few of these, uh, but those are the top NICS codes in the Santa Fe, New Mexico area. Uh, next slide. So again, more information along the same lines for small businesses. Okay, next slide. Uh, top 10 vendors in the Santa Fe, New Mexico area that are doing business with us, uh, listed on this chart. And these are top 10 vendors. And then the next slide will show you the top 10 uh, small business vendors. Uh, next slide, please. Yep, these are the next, these are the top 10 small businesses in that area that are doing business with us. So uh, we know exactly where we're spending our resources and who's doing what for us, and we can do this geographically all across the country. Hey, sir, uh, Admiral, again, I think uh, there's a question that might be answered from that last slide. I'll turn it over to Destiny. I think that first one from Mr. Brown might be right up, Mr. Smith's alley. So Mr. Brown would like to know, in growing from an infant small business to, to one able to become a prime contractor, is there a link that shows current season small businesses that potential subcontracts can be attained? Um, I wouldn't say that we would have that link on our website or our access to it, but I think this is where industry partners need to go do homework on either competition or companies that they want to do business with in that regard. So we, we don't have a link to all the industry partners to do business with and their, their opportunities there, but I think that's more of an industry to industry kind of opportunity to be sought after. Over. Okay, um, another one along those lines are, as a company whose managing directors has previous experience in the CND and IT as a Naval officer and DOD civilian for DHS and DOD, but no past performances as a company, how do we translate that experience as a company to go after DOD contracts? Well, my recommendation to you in that regard, and that's a great question. I get similar questions like that all the time. If you don't have past performance, you truly need to get some because we're, we the government are looking for companies who have done work in these areas because it shows a track record of success. If you haven't done business with us and you don't have that track record of success, I highly encourage you to team with another industry partner where you can get that government customer in their CPARs to write about your company and the work that you're doing to support them. Even when you're a sub to another industry partner, let the government speak for you when it comes to the great work you're doing and the CPAR write-ups that are done to assess how companies are doing, spending and earning the money that they're, that they're seeking from the government. So again, if you don't have past performance, highly recommend you partner with another company and become a sub and let that government individual that you're supporting write up your assessment for your company. And even in the Prime's CPAR, talk about that company that's a sub providing the services that they are. That's the best way and in, in, in the most clear-cut way to support it. Over. Okay. Do we want to keep moving forward? Yeah, let's push on some more slides, and then uh, I see a couple of questions in the queue, but I think Mr. Smith's got some good slides coming up. Okay, absolutely. So this is my small business uh, website. There's the link. 
please use this link if you want to do business with the Navy, if you want to do business with the federal government, because I've got step-by-step -step videos, how-to instructions. You can't go wrong by using these free resources. Now, we also want you to subscribe to our mailing list. When we have topics of interest that are going to be given out to the public, you could be on Ready Distro for knowledge and opportunities that we're providing those that are on our, our mailing list. And we have, like I mentioned, we partner with everyone that we do business with, even the Army, even the Air Force. We did a webinar with both of them on our website to talk about opportunities that they have where they need help and support. So we're very transparent. We're looking for opportunities to partner. But if we don't know you're there, we can't do business with you. So please seek us out and get on our mailing list. Uh, next slide. So let's talk uh, briefly about some of the programs that we offer to small businesses. Uh, small Business Innovative Research and Small Business Technology Transfer Program. These are great opportunities for small businesses who are doing cutting edge kind of things. If you want to be able to do business with us, these, these particular programs are just for you. So if you have a good idea, the Navy will actually give you money for a phase one, phase two, and phase three to, to make that idea turn into something mature and you can build a scale model of it. Three phases go along in this program and we basically look for incubation projects and then let's sit on the egg for a while and then let's see what it hatches into. There's money at all three levels that are set aside for the Small Business Innovative Research Program, and this program is housed out of the Office of Naval Research. Again, um, one of the things that you probably are familiar with if you watch TV, uh, that shows Shark Tank, where you can bring an idea forward and have a panel of folks listening to you, and they get to decide whether we're going to invest in it or not. We absolutely do that in the Department of Defense. The Air Force does it very, very well, and they've been out front. The Navy's actually coming along pretty well in that same kind of arena to take your good idea, give you a check right then and there on the spot so that you can go mature that idea and then get back to us in six months or so and let us know how you're doing so we can take that opportunity to the next level. So again, visit the websites, understand these opportunities and what's made available to you. And these particular programs are run on a periodic basis where we're accepting submissions between this month and that month. We're going to go evaluate them after that, and then we'll start another cycle of bring good ideas into us so that we can actually go off and foster those opportunities and turn them into something worthwhile. And it's a business making, money making opportunity for, for our industry partners. Uh, next slide. Uh, Cooperative research and development craters, these are another opportunities. There's more tools in the toolbox for us to use government money to go off and fund opportunities to do business with small businesses. And protecting your intellectual property is one of the things that we are guarding on. We want to make sure that we're not going to steal your idea and another industry partner is going to guard, uh, garner your idea. So again, more tools in the toolbox, great ways to do opportunities with us in the area of research and development. Uh, next slide. This program, the Mentor Protege Program, actually love this program and you got to hear how sweet of a deal this is. So a small business can partner with a larger industry partner and the Department of Defense will pay that larger industry partner up to three million dollars per teaming agreement for that large industry partner to help the small business. The small business doesn't get any money out of this deal, but you get the help and support that you need from the large industry partner. If it's a good deal for the small business and the large business and the government will benefit from it, those kind of teaming agreements are entertained by the, the Department of Defense and we will go off and fund those opportunities. So as an example, if you're a small company who is in need of a capital piece of equipment that may be resident in some large industry partner's backyard. I want to make blue widgets. I don't have a machine to make blue widgets, but this large company does. We've actually seen many cases over the past in the execution of this program where the large industry partner in one particular case that I'm very familiar with, 
gave the small business that large piece of capital equipment so that they can have it as their own. And now that small business is a sub to the larger industry partner. It's actually cheaper for the large industry partner to have the sub execute that work instead of they themselves do it. But they trained you on the equipment, they gave you the equipment, and now you're making blue widgets and you're not just selling them to that one and only large industry partner. You're selling them to the consumer base that needs blue widgets. So again, $3 million per teaming agreement, that's the ceiling, but we will help large industry partners help small businesses. If you need a certification, if you need training, if you, the things that you can move through this program are great and beneficial to you and to see you broaden our industrial base and come along as a small business that grows into an opportunity to do business with us, that's what we're fostering. Love this program. Um, I don't think there's a downside to it. Three million free dollars to them and you get the benefit of it. Uh, next slide, please. I, I will talk all day on that slide. <laughs> uh, this is another one of my favorites, uh, Naval X. We actually have innovation centers across the United States that are there to be the super connector to capability, smart people, technology, and opportunities. So instead of me learning how to be a rocket scientist, why wouldn't I just go connect myself with the rocket scientist if that's what I wanted to go off and do as a business? So these kind of incubation cells are, and you can see the cities where they're located. We don't go off and try to become the expert in every area, but we can actually go to the experts and employ them for the opportunities that we have. And then when that work is done, they get to go back to doing their thing. We get the benefit of using the experts in the field, and then we can go move forward with the capability that we're, we're looking for. So again, fostering opportunities to be that connective tissue, to work with industry partners that may have never done business with the Department of Defense, never done business with the Navy, but they're doing innovative things. Next on the list, I have another opportunity for you, absolutely free. The Defense Acquisition University, which is uh, housed down at Fort Belvoir, Virginia, we have online training for contractors. If you want to know how to do business with us, if you want to earn opportunities, get certifications, understand what the government's thinking when it does certain things, this is all free training. It's available to you. Uh, highly recommend you, you pursue that link to learn more about the customers and speak the language that we speak when you wanna do business with us. Next slide. Uh, another opportunity, DCAA, this is the activity that takes care of your audit readiness. So you said you gave us something, the traceability, the funds, the products, another opportunity where we're here to assist you in making sure that you check all of the right boxes to do business with us. Next slide. Hey, Mr. Smith, there's a couple of questions in queue. I think you might be able to knock a few of those out. So right, I'll turn it over to you. Our first question, uh, do you utilize the Seaport Next Gen contracting vehicle with or instead of Beta SAM? We use the Seaport Next Gen contract primarily for the Department of the Navy. There are exceptions to that. Um, but that's our primary vehicle. And it's basically a uh, commodity management, a MAC contract where we can make multiple awards. And to be on those vehicles gives you the opportunity to do business with us in a multi-award fashion. So yes, absolutely Seaport Next Gen is how we do business in that regard. If uh, we put these large contracts out so that we don't have to do the individual contracting machinations all throughout the process, this allows us to move very fast to do business with industry partners who are already standing by waiting to do business with us. Uh, next slide, go ahead, next question. <laughs> <laughs> Can the mentor protege program help a small fabrication mach or machine, machine shop benefit in its growth? Absolutely, but the first step is two industry partners need to get together and come up with an agreement. And then between the two of you, you need to show how the government, the Department of Defense will benefit from that teaming agreement. And then make the proposal, make the teaming agreement known to either service or the Department of Defense 
and then we can get on with evaluating the worthiness of that opportunity. But absolutely. But it starts with two industry partners getting together to say, I want to help you, you want to help me, and let's go approach the government together in unison with this opportunity to, to allow that transfer. Okay. Another quick question that we can answer is, how would you go about getting a DAU account? Uh, easy. Just go to the DAU website. It's very easy, cut and dry. Uh, there's no, no hard process about that whatsoever. Okay. www.dau.mil, if I remember correct. Uh, go back one slide just to make sure I got that right. <laughs> uh, one more. Uh, .edu. Got it. And not mil .edu. It didn't sound right when it came out. <laughs> okay. What else you got, Miss Destiny? Do you have a similar system to what the Air Force has in place called AF Works? Yeah, AF Works is, is what we call Naval X on our side. Um, it's opportunities to go off and do business with folks that we don't typically do business with, the non traditionals, as we call it. Um, yes. The answer is yes. We have soft works, we have AF works, and typically these are set up for special communities of interest. So the special operation forces folks, they have soft works, and that's primarily out of uh, Tampa, Florida is where they're doing a lot of that work. But for specific communities of interest, you will find these AF works, soft works, naval X kind of opportunities. Okay. Uh, we can finish up with slides, a few of these questions may be a little bit detailed and we can take them at the end. Okay. Uh, let's push up, I believe, three, uh, go one more, uh, procurement toolbox. Just uh, cybersecurity, as I mentioned before, folks, you have to get your cyber hygiene into a place where you can do business with this. Uh, we've seen way too many opportunities where adversaries are taking my, taking the, the services, the products, the drawings, the specifications, you name it, and they're not getting it from the large industry partners. They're going down to the second tier, third tier suppliers that are providing these goods to those services and stealing right from under your nose and you don't even know they're in your network. So um, stay tuned for, for much more in the uh, coming year regarding cyber hygiene for, for our industry partners to do business with us. Uh, next slide. All right, let's talk about how well we did in fiscal year 20. Uh, fiscal year 20 ended the 30th of September, and this is how well we did. As you can see, we're green across the board. Uh, $17.33 billion was spent on small businesses that served as primes for the Department of the Navy. That's a record. Even in the COVID, uh, COVID unfortunate situation that's affecting this entire planet, we excelled at doing business with small businesses. And like I said, $17.33 billion for industry partners that are small that served as primes. And then you can see the other circles that go along there to the right regarding how well we did with small disadvantaged businesses, services a veteran, women owned, and hub zone. We exceeded all of our goals, even under these unfortunate situations that are occurring and we never shut down for doing business. No one ever said, tie the fleet up, COVID's here. The fleet still operates, the fleet still needs support, and those that support the fleet need support. So again, we're open for business, we're excelling at our metrics, but those aren't the reasons that we're doing this, the, the, the presentation today or the work at my office and, and those that support me in those major buying commands. This is not a motivation for us. This is a byproduct of doing business smartly with our industry partners. I don't levy goals. And one thing that I'll tell you folks, and you know, I, I, the undersecretary of the Navy is my boss. He asked me a question. He said, so what happens if you don't make your goals and objectives? I'm like nothing bad happens, sir. These are goals and objectives. But the fact that we're achieving them, great. But the fact that we're giving the warfighter what they need, that's what speaks about what we're doing. So can't talk more about that, but it, it is just impressive to know that we're dropping work into all of the right areas and opportunities are flourishing because of it. 
Next slide. Uh, these are further details of how well we're doing. We can blow past. Oh, well, actually, let's go back to, to the lower right-hand corner right quick. If you want to look at how the small businesses are doing across the 10 major buying commands, that lower right-hand corner shows you how many billions of dollars they're putting out by way of awards to prime uh, small businesses serving as prime. NAFAC is the largest, uh, NAVC, and so on and so forth. So again, slides will be made available to you. Figure out that right opportunity, that right entity to do business with, and, and move forward in that regard. Next slide. Uh, these were our goals over the last uh, last three years, uh, FY17 and back. The orange line represents the goal, the green line represents the actual performance, and that yellow bar at the top represents how many billions of dollars we spent on small businesses who served as primes. Uh, next slide. Down to socioeconomic categories, here's how we've been doing since FY17 again. Orange is the requirement or the goal. Yellow is the performance of how we've operated. So as you can see, we're doing well in those areas of regard uh, when it comes to goals and objectives laid out for our for the Department of the Navy. Next slide. And we're we'll get to the end here shortly. Um, webinar series. We have some upcoming webinars, November 4th, that's the day. Um, December 3rd, December 8th. So again, if you want to know more about the Mentor Protege program, as was mentioned earlier, um, December 8th was, is when we're going to go do that. The previous events are there on the screen, but they're also recorded. So if you want to go back in time and look at a particular topic of interest, we have that available to you and uh, via, via the various channels, YouTube channels that we have at our disposal. Next slide. All right. My entire career, for 28 and a half years, I was told to stay off of social media. I get this job and they're getting, they're telling me to get out there, be on social media. So as you can see, we're on every social media platform. You can follow us or like us or do whatever you're supposed to do in that regard. But we wanna make sure that you can connect with us however you see fit and we have opportunities in the, the social media platform arena in that regard. Next slide. I think we're done. Yes, we're done. <laughs> More questions, throw them at me. Easy day. <laughs> All right. Can you discuss the difference between speaking with a contracting officer and a program manager? Absolutely. There really shouldn't be a difference until that solicitation hits the street. When the solicitation hits the street, the contracting officer is out of bounds, you can't talk to them. But prior to that award being put out on the street, we provide opportunities through the small business office. If you don't know who that program manager is, or who that right contracting officer is, we can connect you to those entities. And, and from a program manager standpoint, these are the folks with the money and the opportunity and the requirements. The contracting officer is the one that administers the contract. They're there to run it through the legal process to award, and then once it's awarded, to execute it, and then once the work is finished, to properly close that contract out. So program manager, my, I have money, I need something, contractor officer, go figure out how to put this out in the best way that the contracting officer can recommend that the program manager execute to see how that work gets done. Um, both work very well and closely together when it comes to an acquisition strategy. Um, do we want this work to be a small business set aside? Do we want this work to go towards woman-owned small businesses? Because we know we have three or four out there that can do the work. Those kind of discussions are held early on. And before requirements get locked in, you probably want to visit the program manager and the contracting officer to understand what's coming down the pipe. If you looked at the long range acquisition forecast, you know, and you can do business with us. And we can have those kind of discussions prior to those solicitations going formally and released. Next question, please. Hopefully I, that one, hopefully I nailed that one down. Because there's a misnomer out there that you can't talk to folks in the government. That's absolutely false. There are certain times that they're off limits, but prior to that, 
open kimono is absolutely allowed. And, and I've seen many cases over my career where we've actually had industry partners help us shape requirements, where if you ask for that, here's what I think you mean by it. We have those kind of discussions. And, and you get the bounce back. Well, that's not exactly what I meant. Well, if you want what you state, what you think you want, you need to say it like this. So interpretation of words, the uh, making sure we get it right. Because again, the war fighters are what's most important and I don't want to put something out that they didn't actually want or need. Okay, I'll leave that topic alone. <laughs> I'm passionate about that. <laughs> A follow-up to that is, can you discuss proprietary rights to tech in the SBIR STTR program? Yes, um, in the SBIR STTR program, your IP, your intellectual property is absolutely guarded and protected. If you get to a phase three contract award in the SBIR program, you actually have rights to that intellectual property for 20 years. You can do business with us for 20 years where you own that stock. And, and it's absolutely in your favor. Now, one of the things that I will tell industry partners when you become a sub to a larger industry partner, you probably need to have a good IP lawyer at your disposal to make sure that your company's IP isn't being poached off by the larger industry partner. And, you know, we're all good stewards of the taxpayers' dollars. We all want to do the right thing. But if you don't take the necessary measures to protect yourself, um, you're, you're, you're vulnerable. Uh, the government itself cannot exploit your IP. And we have to get through the, you know, to everyone who believes otherwise. We're not here to take your good idea and then farm it off to another entity so that they can go off and produce it and then cut you out of the, out of the, the opportunity that exists. So again, we're here to protect you. If you visit the DAU website, the DAU website actually has a course on protecting your IP. So highly recommend you start to insulate yourself. And one of the other things that didn't come up as a question, but is, is one of my sore spots that I have with small businesses. Many small businesses wear these various badges. I'm a woman-owned, hub-zone, service-disabled veteran, and I mean, the list goes on and on and on from time to time. And when you're partnering with another industry partner, they actually become more attractive when you show up with certain badges in order to do business with us. Don't let your badges be exploited. Make sure that if you're going to partner with someone, you actually get the opportunity to do the work as well instead of get to award and then things change or expectations differ from what you thought. Make sure you insulate yourself when it comes to doing business with others because you look really good as a team when you show up because you've got all of these different accolades. But when it comes to the work hitting the road and the pavement for you doing business with us, we're giving money to the prime. And that prime has to dole it out to all the subs in the division of the work. Make sure that you get your fair share for what you walked into that relationship with. Over. <laughs> Another area of passion of mine. <laughs> okay. In line with the previous Seaport vehicle question, is the Seaport e-vehicle still active? How do we go about soliciting businesses if we are already on the vehicle? Yeah, so Seaport Next Gen is the vehicle, and we all call it Seaport or Seaport E, but Seaport E turned into Seaport Next Gen. So there are various on ramps and off ramps for our industry partners. Depending on the time frame where we're looking for industry partners to come in and join, and for those industry partners that are not performing well, it's time for them to get off that contract new vehicle. Okay, so Opportunities to get on, opportunities to get off. Those solicitations and those windows of time are there in the public domain for everybody to appreciate. Um, one of the challenges that you have once you're on these big MAC contracts is, okay, so who wants the work done? And that's really up to the program managers at that point in time to say, I have a need and I can go exercise this particular opportunity on this Seaport Next Gen contract. So again, we, we just don't 
put work out there for the sake of doing work. There clearly has to be a need for it. The contracting vehicle provides the opportunity, but you still need someone to show up with money and requirements to then pull you into doing the work and earning the money that's available. Okay, so just because you're on there, you're on this MAC contract doesn't mean work's going to come. There's a likelihood that it will because we put the opportunity out there after we canvas the, the landscape with who needs what and we put everybody's requirements into that Seaport Next Gen contract. But the timing of when they want to execute it is truly governed by the program managers who are running those programs and executing those dollars. Over. All right, uh, we have time for one more question, maybe two, depending on how quick this answer is. Okay. So uh, does the Department of the Navy have a waiver for the socioeconomic category standard 3% GSA goal as goals are shown green, but under 3%? Uh, yes, the answer is yes. The Department of Defense actually has a requirement. The Navy serves the next higher level of the Department of Defense. So we actually at the beginning, actually we just did this a, a couple of days ago where Department of Defense is levied requirements by the Small Business Administration. And then there's a derivative that goes to Army, here's your piece. Navy, here's your piece. Air Force, here's your piece. <laughs> Sorry about that, my home security system just went off. Camille, could you come get the animal? <laughs> um, so as you roll up those numbers to an agency level, you get to the requirements and you get to where your goals can be achieved at that point. So. It's not necessarily up to the Navy to meet a 5% goal because we're rolling up to the Department of Defense level. And we really do count on our uh, other service uh, partners to be there to bolster what they're doing as well to, to add to the collective. Over. Okay, and time for one more. Um, as an 8A WOSB, EDWOSB, we supply portable restrooms to the Navy, Army, and the Army Corps in the Northeast. How do we expand to other areas? Well, thank you for that question and thank you for the service that you're providing. Um, again, the long range forecast for each and every one of those major buying commands, that's where you need to look because that's where the source of information is. I mean, I personally don't know right off the top of my head, but I can guarantee you that every single entity that I talked about earlier in the presentation, that requirement is going to be in there. Groundskeeping is going to be in there. I mean, you name it, we're in need of so many things. We're basically small cities all over the world where we need help and support. And everything and anything typically goes when it comes to the support we need. So if you're interested in expanding, again, you can live off of your past performance that you have on the East Coast. That can serve you very well moving out to the West Coast. But again, one of the things that I would caution some of my small business partners on is be sure you're ready to expand to be that larger industry partner that you seek to be. Have the right tools, have the right mechanisms, have the right processes, have the right means of recording data. I mean, we're talking going across multiple time zones. Those things all matter when you run your business across multiple uh, regions of the country and multiple aspects of, of the services. I'm sure that you found that to be the case. But again, look at our forecasts, look for the opportunities and look for when the current contract is gonna sunset so that you know when it's time for you to get ready to to be ready to respond to a solicitation that's going to surface after we sunset a contract. I think that's all we have time for today, sir. Okay. Well, Admiral, I hope I've done you well <laughs> as a part of uh, what we were called to do as a part of the Santa Fe uh, Navy Week. And uh, again, folks, don't hesitate to reach out to my office the website that we have that's available, please use it. I get messages directly from that website. And trust me, we respond. We're only paid to help you. So I need good reports. <laughs> hey, 
And Mr. Smith, thank you so much. Again, a great webinar for Santa Fe uh, Navy Week. I will foot stomp, and I know there was a question we didn't get to about cyber hygiene. Again, I, I can't tell you how important it is uh, as a naval officer, uh, and then again, as a citizen, again, China gathers our intellectual property and profits from it, uh, and we need to protect ourselves. So one of the questions was, how do we go about getting that cyber hygiene piece and not becoming intimidated to work with the government? Again, I, I would recommend they reach out to you. Sure. Uh, you just, you need to be so strong on this to do business with the military uh, because you know, our adversaries are trying to get everything we have, get into every network we have, into every control system. Uh, and I just want to foot stomp that for you. So please, it was a great question. We didn't get to it, but please don't be, inti don't be intimidated as a small business. There are ways to protect yourself and we want to get after it. Also, I'm all about lethality. Uh, I want to be more destructive at the combat power end, but there are lots of small business things, as Mr. Smith said, that are survivability related, facility related. So if you're, you know, hey, I don't want to get anybody blown up or killed somewhere else, uh, there are still so many opportunities for you to support survivability uh, of the military that, that serves you, the citizens of this country. So thanks so much. I'm going to uh, power off here, and I appreciate it. Have a great uh, Navy week in Santa Fe, and thank you again, Mr. Smith and Mr. and Ms. White. Thank you, Admiral. Have a great day.